Thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to have to bully uh, my um, esteemed guests and the audience today to keep us, I think, online. So forgive me for that. We're just running a little bit late. So let's, let's uh, uh, make some headway here. A, 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 a sort of general housekeeping note before we start. Um, in case of fire, the escape route is exactly that which you came in through. So out of here, into the turbine hall and out of the main entrance. I, I'm, I feel very privileged today um, as uh, uh, as it's been explained, to, to, to introduce some of what I think are the best speakers in the industry about uh, this very subject, mobile for good. I think it's going to be a fantastic day. I'd, I'd really encourage everybody to engage. That's the idea, is to really leverage uh, those that we have here and the thoughts that we've got from people here and to really make some hay uh, here at the Tate Modern uh, today. This first session... MWorld is based on the new research created by Rajesh Chandri and Kamalina Ramdas from the London Business School about the potential for mobile for good and how to create solutions which reach scale. So without further ado, let's kick off first session today. Professor Sir Andrew Lickerman is the Dean of the London Business School. I'm going to introduce him to the stage, if you will, sir, and get you to uh, uh, just kick us off today. Alongside uh, Kamalina Ramdash, the uh, Professor of Management Science and Operations at LBS, and Rajesh Chandy, the Professor of Marketing at the London Business School. So if we, uh, have we uh, got you two, come on up and... Uh, We'll start off. Thank you, guys. Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you very much indeed. Um, a good, very good morning, everybody. We're absolutely delighted to be partnering with Vodafone for this occasion. Um, some people, of course, nobody in this audience, uh, say that business schools are only concerned with profit maximization and only concerned with um, you know, the theory about the world. Um, we're very proud at London Business School to be at the forefront of thinking about many management issues, and we are also very proud to be involved in, uh, in helping on wealth creation wherever it is. But this event exemplifies our commitment to partnering with organizations, large and small, and it also exemplifies our commitment to making sure that the ideas we generate have application in the world. And today's event, has all those elements in it. So I'm delighted to have my two colleagues here today. Um, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at some of the work that they've been, uh, been doing, and they are already have a substantial body of work in this area. Um, and the issue of how technology can be brought to scale in a meaningful way is one in particular I'd like to talk about right now, if we could. Um, first of all, then, we know very well that the mobile area is a very fast-moving area and we're seeing lots and lots of new mobile-enabled services developed for social good. However, very few of these reach scale because they don't make the transition in the crowded marketplace and or don't have sustainable profit models. From your research, what emerges as the greatest barriers in achieving scale? I will um, share some of our thinking on this, but let me first just take a minute to share with you how we conducted our research. So what we did is we first looked at everything that's out there published. And what we found is there's an amazing amount of stuff out there, including whole journals dedicated to stuff like um, mHealth. So we um, um, you know, uh, tried to get the state of the art by looking at all of that. And then we also decided, in order to understand what the obstacles are and what the way forward should be, to interview. So we interviewed uh, about 30 executives and leaders. Uh, from uh, big corporations, um, NGOs and uh, um, uh, small businesses, uh, funding agencies, um, uh, governments, members of parliament, so to get a sense of all of this. And um, so what we're finding is that there are literally hundreds and thousands of mobile-enabled services, but very few of them are reaching scale. There's actually plenty of proof of concept, so there's lots of research that uh, does um, uh, what I call proof of concept, which is essentially uh, showing that the service actually has value, that it solves a real problem. But despite that, 
these things are not reaching scale. And, and the real problem, like you pointed out, is um, not having uh, viable business models, well thought out business models. So what I'd like to do is just turn your question on its head and, and share a couple of examples of um, um, ideas which uh, are getting some traction. So one of them is from the US. Uh, WellDoc is a company that has um, uh, a mobile app called the Diabetes Manager, which essentially helps with day-to-day -day management of diabetes. So we interviewed, uh, Rajesh and I interviewed um, Anand Ayer, who is the uh, COO and president of this company, and he shared four hurdles that they were able to cross. So first of all, this um, um, app has proven clinical value. So they actually did the uh, randomized control trials, et cetera. But then the second thing they did, which most of uh, the healthcare apps have not managed to do, is they got FDA approval. So which means that they have the stamp of the regulatory, current leg regulatory uh, environment. Um, the third thing is they have interoperability, which all of you understand very well. Essentially, um, it, you know, the app works on the iPhone, on the Android, it's, it's multi-platform. Uh, but the last thing is actually the most important thing. So if, if I asked you right now, when you're ill, are you going to go to your uh, mobile phone for advice or are you going to go to the doctor? You're probably going to say the doctor, right? So this app actually is going to be prescribed by doctors and covered by insurance. So it, it, it complements the existing um, ecosystem. I'll share one other example, which is from uh, India. And this is um, um, a, a, a business that uh, Reuters has started in India. It's called Reuters Market Light. And it's uh, selling a text message-based information system on prices to farmers, so prices of crops. And so, um, and this, um, this uh, Service has about a quarter of a million farmers subscribed to it. And we, we, in fact, did a study at London Business School trying to understand what kind of impact it's having. And we could see that over time, you know, with a service like this, you would expect that prices of a crop would start to converge across markets. We see convergence in prices over time and uptake of this service over time. So, um, so it looks like the service is helping, but in fact, you can't prove that for sure, because there could be other things, like cell phone penetration actually is also increasing over time. But we were actually helped by the Indian government banning the um, use of mass text messages for a two-week period, because they were worried about some coordinated protests about a religious dispute verdict, which was going to be announced. And what we found is that at that time, um, the prices of these crops started to go all over the place. So in fact, the service is having real impact. And when Rajesh and I interviewed uh, Amit Mehra, who happens to be an alum of London Business School, and uh, who is the CEO of uh, this business in India, what he said again is that um, having a good business model and also being able to pivot the business model as needed is really important. So they started as um, uh, B to C, but when they uh, last year converted to also having B to B, they were able to increase their usage base 400% and increase revenues. And, and uh, Amit shared with us that what's important is in this space of mobiles for socially good purposes, one needs both patient capital and impatient management. Thank you very much, uh, Kamalini. Can I turn next to Rajesh um, to follow that up? Um, and I should say, Rajesh is just off the plane. He, he's just. Uh, returned from Johannesburg. He was leading a group of 90 students in Johannesburg last week for a program there. Uh, Rajesh, what are your top recommendations, do you think, for, um, for different stakeholders in terms of uh, to get more of these services to achieve scale? Uh, thank you, Andrew. Now, before I describe the recommendations, I should note uh, one more bit uh, to what Kamalini mentioned around the impact that mobiles have had. To most in this room, this would not be a surprise, but the 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 impact of mobiles at the macro level uh, on entire economies uh, is at this point fairly well documented. Uh, work at London Business School, work uh, by Deloitte more recently and others shows the substantial impact uh, that mobiles have had at the macro level. Now, the challenge is, what next? And in many ways, the image that came to our minds as we were thinking of uh, the impact of mobiles was that of a child prodigy, uh, of one that had and uh, had talent and impact 
uh, far beyond uh, what many had expected. Uh, at a very age, a very early age, far faster than many had, uh, had expected. But then, there, the question now is, well, will this child prodigy grow on to become uh, the maestro that uh, uh, people expected. And that's the big question. Now, where, what next is, is the big question people ask. And, and for that, what next? For mobile to have the, truly the impact that it, they're capable of having, a few things need to be addressed. Uh, first, and by far the most, most frequent um, idea from those we talk to as well as from reading the literature, is the importance of defining what is core more broadly. Uh, and let me explain uh, what I mean by that. Uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Nick Hughes, who may be in the audience here, um, uh, uh, with Vodafone, recently introduced a solar um, lighting system in Kenya that is powered by M-Pesa, the mobile uh, money service uh, that uh, Vodafone Safaricom introduced a few years ago. Now, one can ask, is lighting core to a mobile company? Uh, similarly, uh, Michael Joseph, uh, who was former CEO of uh, Safaricom, when we interviewed him, uh, pointed out uh, very passionately uh, a water pump solution that's powered by, um, by uh, mobile money. Again, is water core to a mobile phone company? And, and each of the innovators that we talked to uh, pointed out it has to be seen as core. Um, because if more people start using uh, water through mobile money, then more people start using, in this case, Safaricom SIMs, and, and there, should, there will likely be a, uh, a, an impact, a commercial impact. But in the process, by defining things more broadly, uh, mobiles could have an impact far beyond the voice and simple data or text messaging uh, uh, applications. And so uh, this applies not just in the corporate uh, sector, but certainly uh, among regulators, for instance. There, is a, there are these uh, divisions uh, of what is core. So if I'm a telco regulator, well, everything to do with telco specifically is my uh, remit. If I'm a money regulator, financial regulator, it's very narrowly defined around finance. And even that, within those divisions, uh, even within those areas, there are significant divisions. So my point, uh, overall, our point uh, would be recognize a famous uh, quote, the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. So as we grow, uh, as we become successful, we develop these routines that we take for granted. We define boundaries uh, around our what we do, and we would uh, make a plea for a broader uh, definition. The second point actually somewhat surprises, uh, surprised us, and this is around consolidation. Going in, many uh, naively might believe that a problem uh, we have is a lack of ideas or, or lack of applications uh, or lack of ways in which mobiles could have an impact that have been shown already. In fact, those in the, uh, in the field pointed out that the problem is not too few ideas or too few applications, the problem is actually too many. So there's a plea uh, for, towards consolidation, towards aggregation, towards sta standardization now, some of this challenge may well be solved uh, uh, already, given the way trends are going. So in many uh, developing countries, where arguably uh, mobiles have had the greatest social impact, in many developing countries, uh, Android uh, phone uh, penetration, for instance, and tablet penetration, uh, Android operating system, uh, or Google Play operating system penetration has been going up at 200 plus percent uh, rate in the last year alone. So that might happen. But one of the things to note there is, even within these standards, even within these platforms, there are literally thousands of applications. So Kamalini mentioned um, healthcare. On, um, on Android and iPhone, there are more than 13,000 healthcare applications you can get now. So just organizing those uh, and aggregating across. Again, corporations can play a role, um, uh, governments can play a role, and we articulate some of these roles uh, later on. Let me finally uh, make the two quick other points. Uh, and the third, third point is around organizing for innovation. Uh, Duncan Learmouth, who's, uh, who's at the GSK, the pharmaceutical company, also probably here, who we spoke to, uh, pointed out, you have to, to succeed in this business, to have a genuine impact, you have to kiss a lot of frogs. You never know which of them will turn out to be that prince. Um, and, uh, and, and a greater level of risk taking would be, uh, would be much uh, appreciated. Now, uh, 
Andrew, you mentioned I just got back from um, South Africa. Uh, we were with 96 of our MBA students working with tiny micro businesses in South Africa. And rather to um, our students, our MBAs, uh, surprise and delight, actually, uh, these micro businesses, these were little grocery shops, barber shops, etc. One of the things they kept pointing out is, oh, can you help build me a Facebook page? Um, and, uh, and they said, and these were not necessarily the young upstarts, they were often quite older folks, and, they, and our students asked why. Uh, and they say, oh, <coughs> because all of the young people in the, in the township or so slum that we were in uh, seemed to be on Facebook. Uh, and our students said, oh, we could do that. But it turns out, using Facebook on mobiles, it's actually quite different, and the advertising model and the revenue model on mobiles is actually quite different. And the way our students were thinking about it wasn't the way it turned out that the locals wanted to do it. So <coughs> organized for innovation, think about not just today's customers, but tomorrow's customers, including those young people in the townships in South Africa who seem to be very big on not just the voice and text applications of mobiles, but the actual um, uh, smartphone-based and um, high-level data-based uh, applications. Let me end by pointing out uh, two uh, quick other points. One is about the supporting infrastructure. Um, you know, the, the famous uh, quote uh, or line from the Bible, man does not live by bread alone. Well, mobiles will not have an impact uh, with, through mobiles alone. Uh, the supporting infrastructure needs to be built, and this relates to the physical infrastructure. So in order for the farmers in, uh, in Kamalini's study uh, to have uh, an impact or to do better, to do, uh, have, greater, have greater productivity uh, benefits, well, the roads need to be uh, uh, better. Electricity needs to be out there. Uh, the supporting infrastructure needs to be out there. In some ways, mobiles have been successful so far because of a lack of infrastructure in developing countries. That will increasingly need to change. Uh, and so we suggest, for example, a mobile coordinating agency and other things. Last point uh, is around evidence, um, uh, more rigor um, in the evidence we have. So Kamalini's study is a good one in that respect. One of the policymakers we were talking to pointed out to potential uh, innovators, please do not show me another video of all of the wonderful things you're doing because you and your uncle and aunt, everybody shows me the same type of video with music and feel-good uh, uh, graphics. Uh, show me actual data on the impact you're having. And so I'm delighted to uh, point out that tomorrow we'll be working with uh, several academics as well as several um, um, top uh, practitioners around a, a summit a workshop we're calling Business Solutions to Poverty. So let me just point out, define core more broadly, aggregate, consolidate, uh, standardize, organize for innovation, develop the supporting infrastructure, and provide more evidence uh, of user demand and business models. Rajesh, thank you very much indeed. The screens have all gone black, which I think is a pretty broad hint that we're supposed to finish. <laughs> okay, so in that case, um, uh, there are a huge number of things we can talk about. We are very excited by this project, and you can see how enormous the implications are and how work in this field, we believe, in terms of our work with Vodafone together, I think has enormous potential. So thank you very much indeed, colleagues. That's our bid. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, um, so five key recommendations from the LBS uh, research.